Thank you very much for that presentation. And uh, it's a, a good pitch for your shares, if I might say so. And, uh, um, can I now uh, ask uh, John Gladstone from First Quantum to join us, please, and uh, give us his, uh, his presentation? Thank you very much. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. Thank you, Peter. Your Excellency, Honourable Minister, good to see you both again. Um, I think I mentioned when I was here last, Your Excellency, that uh, the traffic in Lusaka is beginning to uh, resemble uh, Piccadilly Circus. And since I saw you last, I I've got no reason to uh, provide you with any other further update on that. Zambia, ladies and gentlemen, um, we think is at a crossroads of opportunity and in a region of optimism. So my piece, hopefully, um, is one of optimism and opportunity. But before I go on to speak about that, I will also touch on uh, First Quantum's long-term commitment to Zambia, because I think you probably deserve an update on that. I'm not going to major on corporate social responsibility, which is an awful phrase anyway, um, although I'm happy to take questions on that uh, offline later, of course. Um, what I do want to do is to show you um, what we're doing in the Northwest Province, which, of course, is the new copper belt, isn't it? I'd also just like to echo Tom's remarks on the transparency question. I know Eddie Rich from EITI spoke on that uh, last week, of course, and Whilst we um, probably like KCM, we think we're probably amongst the most audited minds in the world. Um, we support every initiative that supports transparency. Uh, most recently last year, ICMM's Enhancing Mining's contribution to the Zanami economy and society of 2014. The 2013 EITI uh, Zambian reconciliation, and we look forward to the 2014 reconciliation, which hopefully will be published shortly. Uh, and most recently, of course, the Canadian government's uh, Extractive Sector Transparency Measures Act, something that we wholeheartedly support. Um, we also, I must say, uh, su support capacity building in Zambia. Uh, I will mention the, the excellent EU initiative, the Mineral, Produ Mineral Production Monitoring Support, uh, to your min ministry, uh, Honourable Minister, which uh, I, I applaud you for uh, the action you've taken on that. I think that is really going to show some dividends. Um, and also any initiative that will build on the capacity of ZRA uh, gets our full support. And I commend the Norwegian government uh, in this area. Although I will say, I must say, that I also support Sir Paul Collier's uh, caution of trying to export to Africa and always specific model of how to achieve economic prosperity in Africa. It might not fit entirely uh, uh, snugly. Anyways, moving on to uh, what First Quantum are, are doing at the moment in the Northwest Province. Um, we've just recently completed construction um, and are commissioning the Consanchi smelter, uh, one of the largest smelters uh, built from scratch in the world, capacity 1.2 million tons per annum of concentrate, 300,000 uh, tons per annum of co uh, copper anode. Uh, the smelter includes a 1 million tons per annum acid plant, which is the largest off-gas uh, acid plant ever built. You can sense we're quite proud of that. Um, the commissioning has gone very smoothly. After three months, it's already achieving near nameplate capacity and throughput, which uh, obviously is, is outstanding. Um, I think anyone that's been to visit the smelter there from uh, the audience here, anywhere where you see molten metal being poured, uh, you can't help to be deeply impressed by it, and uh, this smelter is no different. At full output, however, this smelter will not be able to process all of First Quantum's concentrates. So the copper belt smelters, uh, we think, will continue to be needed in very much the same rates as, as they have been historically. Trolley assist, this is uh, the Consanchi uh, main pit, as you can see. Uh, it's, it's somewhat at range, but I think it gives you a feel of what we're trying to achieve there. The trolley ass assist system that we're installing at Consanchi, for us, it's groundbreaking. It really is. Um, our experience, however, is that it's not the cost per hour, it, it, because that doesn't actually change very much, but one does gain 25% in terms of productivity, so of course unit cost comes down. Um, and it's made possible by electric drive trucks, 
And it's our intention to maximise their use of all of our mines, but it does require a competitive power cost to warrant the capital expenditure on those trucks in this system. So I want to touch on power a little bit more in a, in a second. Sentinel, uh, part of the Trident project, again, northwest province. It's about 120 kilometers as the crow flies to, to the west of Konsanchi, for those that, that aren't orientated. Um, it's been completed. It's in the process of being commissioned as I speak. Um, it may be one of the biggest mines ever built from scratch in Africa, we think. Final capacity close to 300 tons per annum of, uh, of copper in concentrate, of course. Um, but, and already this has been touched on, it is a low-grade mine. We're talking 0.51% copper here. So Sentinel is all about throughput. It's all about scale. Uh, it's got the mills that we've got operating there, probably the biggest currently operating anywhere in the world. I think you'll need to travel to Chile to find uh, the same scale as that. Talking about scale, just to give you a feel for some of the vehicles we've invested in uh, to operate at Trident. That might not fit well at Piccadilly Circus. And finally, this one, which I think gives you some um, idea of scale. Those 360 ton uh, Komatsu trucks uh, are being used at Sentinel. Um, and in the background, the reason I'll show you that slide is the, uh, again, groundbreaking stuff for First Quantum is the same mobile crusher. Three of these will be in the pit there. They're going to move every three to five years. Um, they move deeper and deeper into the, into the mine, into the pit as, as, the, as the pit develops, so avoiding trucking and the associated costs with that. So all very impressive stuff. I did mention that I wanted to talk about power briefly um, because of the use of electricity uh, requir requires uh, an extension of the power infrastructure within Zambia. So that's what we've done uh, in cooperation with our partners at Zesco. Uh, we're installing over 600 kilometers of power lines. We're almost complete on that now. Um, and it's probably intuitive to you, it is to me, this will be a game changer. Um, stability, reliability, being able to smooth out those power surges that typically you might get uh, uh, in a grid that is limited in, in scale as, at the moment. Um, currently, the mine's capacity at Sentinel, whilst we're commissioning, is restricted to only one train rather than both trains concurrently. Um, because of the limited power you can see coming from the top from the Nwana substation, but that longer section of power line we're set to complete in the next, uh, next few weeks. Uh, so we'll be, uh, the second half of the mine plant will come online back end of July, sort of August time. What I will say about power is because it is front and center one of the most important things for the success of any Zambian mine, um, we would welcome, in the fullness of time, um, the Chamber of Mines initiative, uh, along with ZESCO, to uh, bring about a, a cost of service study. We think that's, that's important. Um, the need for power, the thirst for power from the industrial users in Zambia, as well as the residential users, is not going to go away. But we would like to see that got just right because I think, it's, uh, I think it's an important issue. Challenges and opportunities. So I'm afraid I can't really talk about that without talking about tax. We must remember that uh, when we made the decision in First Quantum to build uh, Trident and the Consanchi smelter, that would, they were decisions taken before the current uncertainty uh, on surrounding escalating tax regimes. Uh, the lack of stability, the constant changes of tax uh, regime has taken a bit of the confidence away or had, uh, had done sufficiently such that we haven't invested any more uh, capital projects in Zambia since the, the royalty tax rose initially to 6%. We know it's changed since then. Um, and we still have significant amount of investment on hold. So I would reiterate that long-term decisions require in the, in the mining industry require a competitive and stable tax environment. Of that, there is no, no doubt. Uh, so I just want to spend a little bit more time on that. The base metals uh, uh, tax in Zambia is pretty high. And let's face it, there is choice out there. We, as a company in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, are totally committed to Zambia, so I do want to reiterate that. But I also want to reiterate the importance of a stable and competitive tax rate. 
Chile enjoyed financial stability since, and I say financial stability, since around 1973. And so a low uh, tax rate concomitant with that. That's done wonders for their production. Uh, I don't want to take this parallel too far. Um, and many in Zambia might also cite the decline in copper price uh, in Zambia, uh, which has pr um, prohibited them seeing the returns that they might otherwise thought due. I do also want to shine a quick light north of the border onto uh, DRC, where their woes under nationalisation were far worse than Zambia's. I don't think uh, that's up for dispute. Uh, but by, two, and by the year 2000, their production had dropped to under 20,000 tonnes uh, per annum, which is less than 10% of Zambia's. But I will ask you just to cast an eye to the far right of that graph. I'm a firm believer that the position of Africa's number one producer of copper lays with Zambia. It must do. But I have every confidence with the current vector that we see from the government in terms of its changing ability to change tax regime, um, we will see a maintenance of a vector back towards those good times and to see Zambia reclaim its position as Africa's number one copper producer. The reason I put this graph up is because we believe um, that FDI is intrinsically linked to the issue of jobs, and the Honourable Minister alluded to that in his presentation, and we wholeheartedly agree with that. Matt Pascal recently wrote an article stating that the only real jobs in any economy are created by private sector investment, and it's only possible to create sustainable jobs by encouraging new private sector investment. This graph shows graphically uh, what happens uh, to private sector investment since 2000. We think that di uh, diversification in industry or not, further FDI, Honourable Minister, will bring further jobs. And I know that uh, you will help us to achieve that. We do welcome the recent commitments from His Excellency the President Edgar Lungu. He's shown exceptional courage and leadership in instructing his ministries to conduct dialogue with the industry to find the right balance in terms of taxation levels. As I said, the vector is in the right direction. Going forward, this might include um, discussion on Zambia's obligations under the WTO's General Agreement for Tariffs and Trade, by which I mean servicing VAT refunds, by which I mean looking more closely at export tariffs, perhaps. We would also, of course, and as an open pit miner, we would say this, wouldn't we? We would see the distinction between underground mines and open pit mines as being divisive. We are very much a firm believer that a sufficiently elegant tax regime should be one solution fits all, but it's sufficiently elegant to allow for the high cost mines and for the low cost mines, for the underground mines, for the open pit mines, and they aren't necessarily the same. And as if to labour my point, foreign direct investment equals jobs, equals GDP per capital increase. There is absolutely irrefutable evidence out there to support that. And then finally, for completeness. This chart shows that First Quantum has contributed well over three billion US dollars to the Zambian economy in taxes, royalties, and rates. And the detail, gentlemen and ladies, is important. This chart represents tax revenue. This chart represents community projects. This chart represents tens of thousands of jobs and $10 billion of fixed investment. So when I'm asked, how does First Quantum view Zambia? We view it as a land of opportunity and we are hugely optimistic about it. Honorable Minister, your Excellency, thank you very much once again for your time.